Hi, thank you for using the Progress Monitoring Weekly Graph. I'm going to show you a few of its features and a quick overview of Microsoft Excel. Along the bottom are sheets, I sometimes call them tabs, and you do have an instructions tab here. And you would always want to start with goal one, which we'll talk about in a second. Along the top are the columns and along the side are the rows where a column and a row intersect is called a cell and if there's nothing in the cell this area is blank if there's something in the cell then this will show you what's in the cell so you can either edit up here or directly into the cell um, essentially everything in yellow is something that you need to input yourself and you also need to input the goal and the analysis and comments but where that would have been a lot of yellow I didn't highlight that and it seemed obvious if you are transferring your information from your IEP and it's in PDF form you can copy and paste just highlight on your PDF the words of your goal and either control C or right click and choose copy to paste it into here into Excel you would double click into this cell which is obviously merged across all these columns. If there's words in there you want to replace, I recommend highlighting and then right click and choose paste or hit or do control C on your keyboard. Um, or you can use your copy and paste features up here on your ribbon as well. So many different ways to do it. Um, the reason you want to start with your sheet goal one is that a lot of the information in goal one will automatically populate to save you time into the other sheets. So let's say we're in the 2018-2019 school year. We click here and you can see that that's been updated. If I were to delete Johnny's name, then it's deleted in all the other sheets as well. All right, so you also need to input your dates here, which there is a formula and I think there might be a file out there where the formula is missing in a couple of cells but you can see the formulas right here so you could use it and enter it yourself if you want or you can hand type the dates there are plenty of rows in the situation where if we had a lot of snow days for instance a snow weeks um, then you should have plenty of extra rows to account for that so if you wanted to say you were starting your monitoring September 11th, you would type September 11th. You don't have to put 2017 in. Now if you were, because it's the year we're in, if for some reason you wanted to do 2018, you'd have to hand type 2018. Um, and you can see that it gets to, here's the summer months. So say our last week of school is in the week of May 14th. And our first week of school is, I don't know, August 15th, I'm not looking at a calendar, 2018. You could hand type that in there, and then these other dates would automatically fill in for the rest of the school year. So if you happen to have the student again the next year, or hopefully you'll be passing along your um, monitoring graphs to the new special ed teachers as well. So those dates would be in there. The other information, obviously, is the actual student's progress data. These are built for percentages. However, here at the very end, there is a goal for numbers, which would be good for reading fluency, for instance, with words correct per minute. Um, let me go back. <clears throat> the graph itself is going to show the student's progress here in the blue columns. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then what I've done is just arbitrarily type the word break in what is now November 6th. And you can see here it enters the word break on the graph. And then you can um, visually talk about your extended school year um, potential, whether the student's maintaining, recouping, or regressed. Um, that shows it visually. You also need to input your baseline data if you don't, don't have a new goal, so the base, you don't have baseline data, this can just simply be a goal line by putting in, say, your expectation for the student for the year is to be at 85%, so you type 85% in both, and you can see here the line. 
Um, if you do have your baseline data, for instance, if they started at 40%, well, you might not have 85 as your goal, then we'll say 70% is the expectation for their annual growth. This now becomes an aim line, and that's from 40%, aiming up to 70%. Um, I am often asked how to, for instance, you may have a few goals that you want to use with numbers and how to copy a graph. You can right click, choose move or copy, make sure you mark create a copy or else you're just going to move it around and not actually copy it. I like to move it to the end, so if you scroll down here you can click move to the end, click OK, and now you have a copy of that particular graph goal number two. If you don't like it there, you can left click, hold down your mouse and drag it around. And then of course you can right click and bring up your menu and choose delete as well if you want to get rid of some of these sheets. Okay, I'm also going to show you how to print the graph. Um, we're going to print it just normally to a printer and then I'm also going to show you how to print it and save, basically save it as a PDF. So to print it normally, the print area is already set, so you don't have, you should not have to do any formatting. You can see um, that all the pertinent information is here. And now where I just clicked on goal one, it is just doing the active sheets, so it's just printing one of one, it's just printing one goal. Let's say you wanted to print all your goals at once. You would come back, you could right click and choose select all sheets. Now you can see they're all selected. Okay, they're all selected, but you may not want to print your instruction sheet. So you would, um, you would hold down your control button on your keyboard and then right click. No, I apologize. You just you would um, write, hold control on your keyboard and then just click on instructions, which my recording button is in the way. Let's see if I can move that. Okay, let's say I didn't want to um, print this goal number, so I would hold the control button on my keyboard, left click, and it has deselected that particular tab. Then I go file, print, And now all of those tabs but the one I deselected are considered active sheets and it takes it a second to process the information. But you can see here now instead of one of one, I have one of ten and it, again it takes a bit of time to load so we're not going to wait for that. Maybe we are. If you do that, please, please, please remember to come back into your file and deselect. So to deselect, so they're not all selected again, um, you can just click on any one of them and you can see how they went back to gray. So again, select all sheets, they all turn to white because the, because they're selected. Just click on any of the sheets and they all become deselected. Make sure you deselect if that's what you do. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to um, save the Excel file in PDF form. So we'll do File, Save As, and this may be different depending on what computer you're at. Um, I always choose Browse because I want to decide where I'm going to save the file, which is going to be very important. So I chose Browse. And then here's where you can put it on your desktop, in your My Documents. I'm at home, so I don't have my computer drive. But here's where you can choose. So we're going to choose Desktop. And then here, Save as Type. I'm going to choose PDF. And then click Save. I already have one saved. Just ignore that. It's asking me to override the one I already have saved with the same name. Now in this case we just had the goal number one sheet highlighted. So only one sheet saved to PDF. But we could do the same. 
where we um, select. Let's say I will show you how to select a few. So again, you would press your control button on your keyboard and hold it. And let's say I just want goal four, goal seven, and goal nine, and the goal number. I would do file, save as. I'm going to browse so I can choose where to sa save it. I'm going to do it on my desktop again. And then I'm going to choose the PDF, save. I already have one named that, which you could rename it right there as well. And it's because it's doing more than one sheet, it's taking a little bit of extra time. But you'll see, I think we selected four, one, two, three, four different sheets. So then the PDF should have those four. Good. So you can see here's one, page two, page three, and page four. Okay, I think the other thing I have not shown you is just how to change the name of your sheet. You just double click. And I always like to name this as the reading comprehension goal, for instance. I think that's it. I hope this works really well for you and I appreciate your patience with me. I'm by no means a professional video recorder. Um, so thanks again and have a great day.